We now move to the presentation of our honorary graduate. I'd now like to invite Professor Stephen Madison, Head of the School of Humanities, to present Munro Bergdorf. Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, graduates, families and friends, it is my honour to introduce Munro Bergdorf. When the university considers awarding honorary degrees, it seeks individuals who have not only pushed the boundaries of their field for the benefit of society more widely, but who also reflect the values that are important to us here at Brighton. Creativity, sustainability, partnership, and inclusivity. Today, we seek to honor such an individual. Munro Bergdorf is a model activist and social campaigner. She also happens to be mixed race and transgender. And I am very proud and delighted to say that she is also a graduate of the University of Brighton. Munro was assigned as male when she was born and as a teenager attended an all boys high school where she was subjected to bullying. She was never comfortable with the gender assigned to her and not surprisingly described her adolescence as a difficult and challenging time. She came to study English here at the university in 2005, describing herself at this time as genderqueer and started wearing makeup and heels. After graduating, a career in fashion PR followed and it was at this time, in her own words, that she crashed and burned. At the age of 24, she took the decision to transition to female, working as a DJ to help fund the process. As a DJ, she began to build a following in the LGBT community and first started to emerge as an influential figure. Her first modeling assignments followed, resulting in Monroe being named by L'Oreal as the face of True Match, a high profile campaign linking makeup and social justice. It was a role that only lasted three days. In the wake of a Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Louisiana in the USA, an anti-racist protester was killed by a white supremacist. Monroe took to social media. Her vehement denunciation of racism and how this is structurally inherent in white society echoed around the world. It also resulted in a huge vitriolic and highly personal backlash against Monroe. She found herself in the eye of a media storm led by the Daily Mail and was instantly fired by L'Oreal. This trial by media reached its peak in an on-air clash with Piers Morgan on Good Morning Britain. But Monroe was not cowed or beaten by this experience. In September 2017, the UK-based Illimasca hired Munro as the face of its beauty spotlight campaign, which concerned gender fluidity. In a statement, the company described Munro as embodying diversity and individuality. She is not scared to be truly herself. It also denounced the media's misrepresentation of Munro's views. In February 2018, she was appointed as an LGBT advisor to the Labour Party, but resigned a month later, blaming the conservative media for using her as a political pawn and as a cause to attack Jeremy Corbyn. Undeterred, Monroe has continued to push further forward in both her activism and in her modelling career. She has spoken at several key panels on diversity and race, including those at Oxford, Cambridge, and Princeton universities. She has also closed shows at New York and London Fashion Weeks, as well as being featured in numerous global publications, including US Vogue and the Sunday Times. Munro regularly appears on national and international television news to comment on race, diversity, gender, and LGBTQ plus topics, and writes for publications including Grazia, ID, Evening Standard, and The Guardian. And she was named as Change Maker of the Year at the 2018 Cosmopolitan Awards. 
Monroe's first documentary film, What Makes a Woman, premiered on Channel 4 in May 2018. In the hour-long documentary, partly filmed here in Brighton, Monroe examined the changing world of gender and identity in today's society as both author and subject. If there is a single message coming out of Monroe's life and career to date, I think it is best summed up in her own words. Never let anyone's misconception of you become your perception of self. Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, graduates, families and friends, in recognition of her major contribution to transgender rights, it is my absolute honor to present Monroe Bergdorf for the honorary degree of Doctor of Letters of the University of Brighton. Mumro, in recognition of your incredible contribution to transgender rights, I have the great privilege to bestow upon you the award of an honorary Doctor of Letters, the University of Brighton. I look forward to you addressing the audience. Well done. I'll take that from you and give it to me get back. Vice Chancellor. Chair, distinguished guests, graduates, families, and friends. I'm so nervous, by the way, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for this. I can't begin to um, explain how I feel. Um, I've known about it for a while, but um, being here is amazing, and it's, it's incredible to share this moment with you graduates. So thank you for having me. Although I was 19 when I moved to Brighton to attend university, Big Up Falmer Campus, if any of you, yes, it's windy, but it, we, we, we worked it. I still to this day feel that in many respects it's where I grew up. My work since graduating has taken me all over the world, something that I'm so grateful for. But honestly, this is one of the most rewarding trips that I've made coming back to Brighton to accept this honorary doctorate is something that I never thought would or could ever happen. When I was studying English language with media communications, I was also battling an eating disorder and severe depression. I had so much sadness, anger, and confusion inside of me, more than I knew what to do with, until I received an email from one Jessica Moriarty to ask why I hadn't been attending my lectures. That was the email that most probably saved my life. I hadn't been attending lectures because I was extremely ill. I wasn't eating and I wasn't sleeping. I slept, stepped into Jess's office and I could see her face drop. I was painfully thin. I can't even begin to describe how lost I was at this point, how desperate I was to put into words what was going on inside to help it make sense. But from that point on, Jess helped me to start helping myself. She encouraged me to own the hurt I was feeling and put it into the work. She helped me to develop skills that I use every day within my activism now and my writing and beyond. She helped me to communicate how I felt and allowed me to connect with other people today and how they're feeling. If it wasn't for those meetings in Jess's office, if it wasn't for the kindness, the understanding, and the patience that she showed me when I needed it, I probably wouldn't be here today. So I'd like to dedicate this doctorate to Jess for being the most incredible role model I could have ever wished for. And she's probably crying right now, and I'm <laughs> definitely gonna cry soon. For being the most incredible role model that I could ever wish for and giving me your time and understanding in some seriously dark times. So I'll leave you with this as you go out into the world, graduates. Be ambitious, yes, 
Be tenacious, yes, but also be kind, be understanding and be patient because every single one of us are going through or will go through something where we need someone to believe in us when we don't believe in ourselves. Not done yet. <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> Be that person to help someone else fly when their wings feel heavy. I wish you all the best of luck with your futures. Thank you for this award. It means everything. Mamro, you are truly always a Brighton alumni. We are desperately proud of you, and thank you so much. Um, and we will keep you connected. Thank you.